Okay, as we've discussed statistics thus far, we've gotten into some of the basics with mean, median, and mode. And then we spoke a little bit about standard deviation. And now we're going to turn our attention to normal distributions. Uh, so many, so much of our data is normally distributed, and we'll define that in just a moment. That it's important to kind of recognize uh, what that means and what that tells us. Uh, in particular, we're going to discuss normal distributions and what's called the the empirical rule. So our objective: given a normal distribution use the empirical rule to find a particular percent. Okay, so what do we know coming into this? We know, the, we know what a standard deviation is, or what standard deviation is. Standard deviation is a typical distance between an individual data item and the mean. That's okay, we've also just defined it as a measure of how spread out the data are. Okay, as I just spoke to, many data sets are normal in that the numbers tend to cluster around a central value. They tend to cluster around the mean with no bias to the left or to the right. When graphed, these data sets resemble a bell shape. And I'm sure you've probably seen this uh, here and there uh, in uh, oh, news items that have statistics involved or various graphs that talk about, you know, that talk about the bell curve or a bell shape. Let's define the word, let's define normal distribution. A normal distribution is a graphical display of data in which the data tends to cluster symmetrically around a central value it's also, you know, it, it looks like a bell curve, okay? That's where, you, where bell curve comes from. So now what, you know, what is normal? What data sets are normal? And what data sets, therefore, have a graphical display that looks like a bell curve? Well, heights are normal. Weights are normal. Heart rates are normal. Test scores battery lifetimes, intelligence scores, et cetera, et cetera. For example, let's take heights. Let's take female heights. Uh, let's, take, let's take the height of uh, U.S. Uh, female adults. And we'll find that there's an average height. I think it's around 5 foot 4 inches, maybe 5 foot 5 inches. And the vast majority of women tend to cluster around that average height. Okay, and then as you go, as you get taller and taller, you get fewer and fewer women. As you get shorter and shorter, you get fewer and fewer women. Okay, so here's the bell curve right here um, uh, and a normal distribution. Okay, the mean, median, and mode, uh, one of the characteristics is the mean equals the median equals the mode. So it's right in the middle here, and we generally focus and a normal distribution on the mean. And you can see there it's a there's your bell curve shape and there it's symmetrical. Okay, you have 50% of data below the mean, 50% of data above the mean, and as you get further and further away from the mean and either above or below, you have fewer and fewer data items that are represented. Characteristics, well, I mentioned the first one. The mean is equal to the median equals the mode, but we're going to focus on this line representing the mean. It is symmetrical about the center. Okay, The area under the curve is 1, or we'll focus more on the fact that this, the area under this curve represents 100% of our data. As I said, 50%. Mm, excuse me, of the data values are less than the mean and 50% are greater. And the area under the curve represents the likelihood as a percent of occurrence. Okay, because we're, we're dealing with percents underneath this curve. Okay, so that's your normal distribution. Now, how does that come into play with 
uh, standard deviations. Well, here's how, here's how it happens. The shape of the bell curve, taller and narrower, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me, versus shorter and wider is defined by the data standard deviation. So I found this, uh, I found this online. We're not going to worry about it. it does say density over here. We're not going to worry about what it represents. We want to see is that both of these curves, this one is a bell shape, again, and this one is a bell shape. This one here has a standard deviation of 15 in this case. The, tape, the, uh, the chart is right here. And this curve, the dashed line curve, has a standard deviation of 30. So the smaller standard deviation results in a narrower, taller bell curve or normal distribution. Because you go from 100 here, this is your mean 100 in this example. You add 15, one standard deviation, you add 15 again. Uh, in this case, standard deviation of 30 represents it to be, rep means it's gonna be shorter and wider as it, uh, and so it's, a, it's still a bell curve. Most things are still clustered in the middle, but they're not quite as clustered as they would be when a standard deviation is 15. Okay, no matter what shape, in other words, no matter if it's tall and narrow or short and wide or somewhere in between, no matter what shape, however, the percentages of the values that are within one, two, or three standard deviations of, above or below, the mean are always the same. And that's the beauty of the normal distribution. We can use it to give us information. <clears throat> My throat's not working very well today. Okay, so how is it, what have they found out about this? Well, they have discovered the empirical rule. In any normal distribution, the percentages of values that lie within one, two, or three standard deviations of the mean, and this is the wrong word here, are... 68%, 95%, and 99% respectively. Okay, in other words, 68% of the data in a normal distribution lies within one standard deviation of the mean. That's, two, that's a little over two-thirds. So the vast majority, almost two-thirds of our data, or the majority of our data, lies within one standard deviation of the mean. Let's take a look at that with these three different charts that show this. Okay, again, there's the first two right there. So here is, here is a, just a generic bell curve, a generic normal distribution, and again, we'll, this is the mean. Okay, you can see the bell shape. We know that 50% are above, 50% are below, and if we go out one standard deviation, we'll get to here. If we add two standard deviations, add three standard deviations, or subtract one, subtract two, subtract three, etc. Well, between negative one and one standard deviation from the mean, okay, 68% of our values are there. Okay, between here and here, that's two-thirds of people will fall right in that region in a normal distribution. Okay, now let's recognize it's also symmetrical. So this is going to be 34% are within one standard deviation above the mean. And of course, 34% are within one standard deviation below the mean because of the symmetry. Now, if we go out to two standard deviations, as we've done down here, okay, we have now captured the vast majority, 95% of the data values, the data points, are within two standard deviations of the mean. Almost everybody is going to be clustered in this area of the curve. 95% under this curve has been shaded. you got a few people out here, and you got a few people out here, but 95% of us. So using my height example for women, for example, if the average woman is, uh, let's see, five feet, four inches is the, the number I used. Um, that's gonna be five feet is 64 inches. 
Okay, well, if the standard deviation is, is let's say, 3 inches, so we go up 6 to 60 inches and down 6 to 48 inches, we're going to capture 95% of the heights of women, adult women in the United States, as an example. And we'll do a bit more with that with our example here. So 95%. Now, continuing to three standard deviations, and just give me a second here to uh, get my notes together. Continuing to three standard deviations... Okay, we are now shading, I think I'm there, we're now shading almost the everything under the normal distribution. 99.7% of people, of women in the case of my heights example, will fall within three standard deviations of the mean. Okay, that's how powerful the normal distribution is. It really tells us what's going on. Okay, well, if 99% 99.7%, excuse me, are within, th you know, three standard deviations. That means that this little piece and this little piece, those two pieces together, represent 100 minus 99.7. Well, this represents 0.3% of the data points together. So this one is going to be 0.15%, and this one's going to be 0.15%. So in other words, for someone to be above three standard deviations from the mean or below three standard deviations from the mean means they're pretty darn rare. It's, you know, it's, it's less than, gosh, it's less than a quarter percent to be above three standard deviations from the mean, etc., Okay, and again, we'll label this the mean. Okay, so let's take a look at an example with, of this, and we'll see how this works. And I may have to come back and pull in my, yeah, I'll pull in my, if I can find my chart here. Oh, uh, yes, okay. So, um... Okay, example one. The scores on a certain achievement test are normally distributed with a mean of 500 and a standard deviation of 50. What percentage of the scores are A, between 400 and 600, and B, higher than five, 550? Okay, well, let's, you know, let, let's just quickly sketch a normal distribution. I like to start by drawing a line and then a mean, and then I just kind of, uh, I don't get fancy. I just kind of try to make it look like, you know, there you go. That's not, uh, it's nothing great, but it gives me an idea of what's going on. Obviously, if you look, if you look at the two drawings here, mine's not great, but you, you just try to get a sense of what's happening here. So this is our mean, we've called that X bar. And we go one standard deviation uh, up, two standard deviations up, and three standard deviations up. And we go one down, two down, and three down or below. Those are standard deviations above and below the mean. So there's our basic, uh, there's our basic normal distribution, a basic bell curve. Now let's put in our values that we know. A mean of 500, so I'll put 500 here and a standard deviation of 50, okay? Plus one means plus 50. That means this is at 550, this is at 600, and this is at 650. Add one standard deviation, add two standard deviations, add three. Subtract one standard deviation to 450, subtract two to 400, subtract three to 350. So, this reminder ourselves. Okay, we have, a, we have a mean score of 500. Well, we, we know that 68% of our scores are going to be between 450 and 550. Okay, they're between, they are within one standard deviation from the mean. If we go out a bit more, 95% of our scores are between 400 and 600. And finally, 
if we go even further to three standard deviations away, 99.7% of, of the scores on this achievement test are between 350 and 650. If you got above 650, you are a real rarity. If you got below 350, you're also a real rarity. Okay, so we're looking between 400 and 600. So we're looking what percent of the scores are in this area of the curve. Okay, well this is between two, this is between negative two and two standard deviations. We go back to here and we see that between negative two and between two standard deviations is 95% of our values. Okay, so we notice that 400 is two standard deviations below the mean, 600 is two standard deviations above the mean, and since we are plus or minus two standard deviations, this tells us that 95% of the scores are between 400 and 600. You know, nice thing to know, you know, try, trying to get a sense of what's really going on with this data. Okay, now let's do that. Was letter A? I'm gonna put an A here for you. Let's do let's do letter B. I'm gonna do a quick drawing again of the normal distribution. So, again, I just kind of draw a straight line, then I draw a mean, and then I attempt to make a bell that is symmetrical. Perfection is not the goal. We know this is the mean. We know we go plus one standard deviation. We go standard deviations, adding them to the right, and we subtract them to the left. And we know our data, whoops, I need to get up here so you can see that. We know this is the general standard, this is the uh, generic standard deviation, excuse me, normal distribution. We know we have a mean of 500, a standard deviation of 50, so add 50, add 50 again, add 50 again, subtract 50, subtract 50, and then subtract 50 for a third time. And so here's what we're going to work with. Now we want to know letter B higher than 550. Okay, well here's 550. 550 is one standard deviation above the mean. And we want to know what percentage of our data is in this range and by the way this goes on forever uh but you know so you're but it obviously tapers off to smaller and smaller numbers but what percentage is in here okay well we want to use our symmetry and what we know we know that half of the data right this represents 50 percent okay so less than 500 is 50 percent okay so now we, we've captured this part what is this part in here okay well greater than 500 and less than 550 that's one standard deviation above okay so we know that we know that between negative one and positive one standard deviations we know that this entire piece is 68%, and since it's symmetrical, although my drawing it's not quite symmetrical, we know that this piece is 34%, half of 68. So this is half of 68%, which equals 34%. So we know that from here to the, to the mean is 34% of our data, and from the mean all the way down to the very end of the tail is 50%. So we want to know how much is above? Well, the whole thing is 100%. And then we're going to take off 50% because that's not included. Then we're going to take off 34%. And we have a 16%. 16% of the scores are higher than 550 in this. Okay, 
So there you have it, a little work with the normal distribution as well as the uh, empirical rule. Now, what's going to come up next, you might ask yourself, well, what happens if a number is like 510? How do you know what that represents? So the number 430, you know, you, you, I, you know, I made use of the numbers that were exactly one, two, three standard deviations above or below, but there are a lot of numbers that are not exact. What about those numbers? Well, in the next video, we're going to talk about Z-scores so that we can deal with those.